This problem is asking us to rewrite this really big integrand. The first thing to notice about this integrand is that it's a rational expression, and the degree of the numerator is greater than or equal to the degree of the denominator. If that's the case, the first thing that we need to do is polynomial long division. If we want to divide that numerator by that denominator, here's how we set it up. Notice that I put a 0x in here where there wasn't an x term. That's just to make sure that I don't mess up my spacing. But the first question we need to ask is, what do we multiply x squared by to get 5x cubed? The answer is 5x. Actually multiplying that 5x through this polynomial gives us 5x cubed as expected plus 0x squared minus 125 x. What we then do is we subtract 5x cubed minus 5x cubed is 0. That's what we wanted. 2x squared minus 0x squared is 2x squared. Subtracting here is going to give us a 4x and we bring down the next term which gives us a 50. Now we have to ask the question what do we multiply by x squared to get 2x squared? And the answer is 2. Again multiplying this 2 through this polynomial is going to give us a 2x squared plus 0x minus 50 and if we subtract we're just going to be left with a 4x as our remainder. So what just happened there? Well by doing this polynomial long division we just found out that we can rewrite the original integrand as the quotient which is 5x plus 2 plus the remainder which we got was 4x divided by the original denominator. That's what we wanted out of this polynomial long division. Now notice that we've started to answer the question. The problem says the integrand decomposes into the form and it starts with ax plus b. Well we have our ax plus b right here. So our a is 5 and our b is 2. We have that so far. Now we need to further break down this last term, this 4x over x squared minus 25. And to do that the first thing we need to do is realize that the denominator can be factored into an x plus 5 and an x minus 5. And because this term now has a numerator whose degree is smaller than the denominator, we can split this denominator up into its two factors. And our goal now is to find what I would normally call a and b, but that this problem problem is actually calling little c and little d. Okay, let's scroll down and complete the partial fractions. I'm going to ignore this piece right here. And to solve for c and d, I'm going to multiply every single term by x plus 5 and x minus 5. All of our denominators are going to cancel. And what we're left with is 4x on the left, a c times x minus 5 on the right, as well as a d times x plus 5. Once again, we're in a position where we can choose pretty clever values for x. Note that if we choose x equals 5, and plug that into this equation, we get our c term to zero out, and we pretty quickly get d equals 2. If we choose x equals negative 5, that will zero out our d term, and we pretty quickly get c equals 2. Now putting this all together, we found that we can rewrite the original integrand, which was this big mess up here, as the following. We got 5x plus 2 after doing the long division. Then we split up this final term into a 2 over x plus 5 plus another 2 over x minus 5. Now that is going to be the final answer to the problem. If we wanted to complete the integral, we would now integrate each one of these four terms separately, which would go pretty quickly. So I'm going to zoom out on that so you can see the whole thing. And I will see y'all in the next video.